All right, in this video, what we're going to talk about is we're going to make a Factory Talk SE Site Edition client. Well, this is going to be Factory Talk 10. So we've taken our YouTube 30 day challenge, our 30 day uh, servo build. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch that. You're going to get a tremendous amount of value from that. But we've taken that 30 day build from FTView 10 or from FTView 7 to FTView 10, right? And this is again side edition. So we're going to make a client for this. And we're going to show you the ins and outs of making a client the easy way. Right, so there's the top a button up here, which you're already in the edit mode, right? You're already in Factory Talk Studio, and this is uh, in Studio. You're editing, the, you know, the actual application, right? So when you come down here, you can actually go and launch the the section right here where you can make a client, you can create a client right here, you can edit a client, you can run a client, right? So if you've already had a client that you already made, you can run it from here. If you want to edit a pre-existing one, you can edit it from here, or you make a brand new one. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to show you the ins and outs of how to do that. And some things to watch out for, so please make sure you watch every detail because I'm going to talk about some ins and outs and things that you need to know. All right. so you can also go to your, your actual start menu if you wanted to and go to your soft, Rockwell software and open it up from there as well. But this is just as easy if you're already editing, you're already in Studio, to open it up from Studio. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new one. And this is what we're going to do is we're going to create a name. And we're going to name this as the 30 day YouTube challenge or 30 day YouTube, um, uh, actually YouTube 30 day and then slash servo client, right? So we're going to name that client file. And then that's going to be our name. Our storage location, you can, you know, generally speaking, it's going to go to the, the default location of uh, where you have the Rockwell comes in with the default of, of C drive. And then it goes to C drive, then it goes to you, all users, and then public, and then it goes to S, Factory Talk SE, right, where the client file is. Generally, that's where it goes. Now, I've changed that to my, my desktop, so I'm going to just hit continue right here. Um, now, you can put that wherever you want to, right? So, um, and this is a network distributed application. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the application. Okay, so I've named my application Motion App Server version 31. Okay. And then I'm basically going to pick my application. This is my uh, HMI server name. Okay, so I, you have, uh, you, ha you do have the ability to, if you're in a different, you know, like if you want to change for a different uh, language and stuff like that, you can. However, this is an English version, so this is what, what you know what I have. Now in here, you can choose an initial display if you want to choose an initial display to start up. Uh, you can put in display parameters if you want to do that. As far as that goes. I like to kind of start it a little bit different so I build my application if you've seen that and again go back and watch the 30 day challenge if you want to see how I built it but I actually go back and do the uh, client keys and then I do the a startup macro so I start I make a startup macro and again if you wanted to do you actually want to see how to make that macro you can just type in uh, startup macro or our factory talk macro in the search channel uh, or the search icon of this channel and you can actually see that video so um but anyway i make a, a a macro right here and you can actually this is exactly what i do to start it up right so at this point i want to actually go to an advanced setting now in advanced is, is slightly different right so you have i want to go maximum screen okay so i don't want to have a specific dimensions and stuff like that i want i would not have a i'm not actually using a show title bar right so I'm not using the show title bar and then I'm gonna not allow a resize right so now I do want diagnostics and that's just normally you don't want diagnostics what diagnostics is is this diagnostic bar down here this diagnostic bar down here that's what that is right so if you do want diagnostics on your client you can enable that right here now you can also enable allow docking and undocking um, I like to leave this while I'm doing like different like troubleshooting aspects but when I make the client for the actual machine and I make it for running I actually cut that off and the reason being is because you don't want to have like little things popping up on the very bottom of your screen all the time it just makes it kind of you know so I'll show you with that and I'll show you without that so we're gonna actually make it and then we'll come back and edit it right um, now you can come into debugging and security now this is where a lot of people kind of mess up because they forget that these are here right this is the enable auto logout right so 
I like to cut that off because I actually have script and stuff that does that for me. It will actually auto log my stuff off or auto log it on. In this case, this is a simple application where I'm not using stuff like that, so I'm not going to actually you know use any of that. You can open and uh, also use this to open in Factory Talk View Client View Only. You can choose to do that. Again, um, that's completely completely up to you what your what phase of this if you're in. If you're if you're actually in editing and you're trying to do stuff, you can enable debugging of your code. So that's a cool feature too. We're not going to do that again. Um, we're going to come in and, and actually make it first. I'm going to show you it running, and then we'll come back and play with it. We'll edit what we just made, and then we'll come down to other, right? So other, what this is doing is it's this is the main ta maintain tag connection, and then this is the navigation tracking. So you can choose how many displays it will navigate and track, right? If you have navigation tracking that you're doing inside of your application, like a forward reverse or like say for instance your next and previous screen then you can do that um, that's a very cool feature I like that so I, I tend to leave that on and use that you can have this onboard uh, on on screen keypad if you want to um, I like to generally not use that but again we'll come down and save these options and now we can come back to the start menu and we don't have to have to go back to start menu but you can also hit advanced right here and, and do all that as well so again I'm going to show you this with the docking station on with the diagnostic docking on and we're going to run that right now now I actually have this hooked up to my trainer right so I have this actually hooked up to the live trainer you're going to get to see it running you're going to get to see everything working so we're going to go ahead and sign in and it, it's going to go ahead and log in so this is the initial login feature all right so when it, it's just basically syncing up, it's actually loading the process, this is actually running the client on the actual server that it actually got built on. Right, so if you think about it, we're in the still, we're, we're kind of in the testing phases, we're kind of in the building phases, we're kind of doing things, and we, we, we're starting this thing up, we want to test it on the client or on the server first, or on the computer that we're building it on. It doesn't have to be a server, it could be a computer, right? But again, uh, I definitely want to, just to kind of explain how this process is working, right? So this is uh, exactly what's happening right here. And you can see we basically built this application. This is a simple application. See this little navigation bar down here? This shows you the diagnostic screen, right? So that's the diagnostics. I generally keep that on only when I'm actually you know, troubleshooting. I'm making the application. I'm troubleshooting. I'm trying to see when things are, you know, if there's any problems, if there's any kind of like errors or, or stuff like that that I need to work on, and you can you know see that down here. Now again, um, so this is the application, right? So we see the application, the application window. You can see you can come up here and see the the server status that we have on the local application. And again, if you and this is the previous and next screen. So if you want to look at history, you can look at history right here. That's that app, that navigation tracking that I was talking about. It's a really, really cool tool right here. You can clear it, you can come up here and do that. Um, and it, so it's just as simple as using it. And we now we're starting the application, right? So if we come in here, we hit the start button and this is a delayed start. So we'll start it. So it's at a start request and now we're actually running. Now you can see we have our draws and everything. And, and again, if you wanna know how we did this and wanna know how we built this stuff, you can actually go back in and watch that videos and it's just a matter of watching the 30 day challenge videos uh, because again we built this day by day and we actually showed you each process of the step whether it be an HMI video on that day or whether it be the actual code in the background that day so we'll put the draws back to where we had them okay so we're gonna close the client now I use client keys so I'm gonna do control shift Q okay I'm gonna shut it down I'm gonna start this back up right here now I'm gonna come in and edit that so I'm going to edit, right? So I'm going to choose which one I'm going to edit, right? So in this point, it's right here, but I can also choose the client, right? I can also choose the client that I want to use, but I already, I already have it up here. So I'm going to edit that one. So just keep in mind, you can, you can always switch which one you're editing. If you have multiple, like I just had, you can always choose and come back and, and change that if you want to. So this time I'm going to cut off the diagnostic bar. I'm going to save and I'm going to run. Now, this time you're gonna see it where it's not gonna have this bottom bar down here, right? So this is the benefit from it. 
right? When you actually make it, and you don't have to rename it or nothing, right? You just come in and you make it one time. You name it what you want to name it. You can share it between client computers, right? This is the server. If you think about this, this would be the server. If we have other computers attached to it, we can just make one client and then pass that on to the rest of the clients via the network or whatever the case may be, right? And then as long as the, those clients are pointed their network directory to this actual computer or server, right? And we, again, we've kind of talked about that in previous videos, but this, this video is more or less about making the client file and having it running, right? So how do you make a client, right? In FTV 10, this is how to do that. Real simple, real easy way to do that. So again, we still have our navigation. We still have everything here. We no longer have the bottom diagnostic bar. Right, so that's a real nice and clean and, and good looking feature, right? So we no longer have our diagnostic bar down here, right? So that's a it's a really, really, really good feature. So let's actually shut this down because we actually still have this running. Um, we don't actually have, these are all virtual servos. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna make a video showing um, I've added this to my trainer because there was there's an issue with the emulator controlling servos on uh, like changing the draws and stuff like that while you're running there's an issue with that on actual aim the emulator file so the emulator the the 500 are um, <clears throat> studio uh, is I think it's studio version 31 there's, a, there's an issue with that right there's a tech note about that so if, if you wanted to see what I'm talking about this will start right and you see how the the velocities are different so I'm doing it while it's running. I'm changing the actual. Um, I'm actually changing the gear ratio. So these are all geared together, but I can change the gear ratios all in one. All right. So there's an issue with the actual emulated version of this software. There's an issue with that. So what I did is I put it on an actual processor, which I do have my trainer here. So it benefits me to actually have it all there. So I can actually tie in a my real servo as well. So we're gonna make a video and add some controls to that. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift Q again. We're gonna get off that. And now you know how to make a client. Now when it comes down to it, you can go back and edit these features all you want. It's just as quick and easy as we just talked about, depending upon which one you wanted to edit. Again, you have startup features, you have all this stuff. You can easily change any of this stuff, right? So please just kind of, if you understand the, the ways we just did things, right? And if you have any questions on how we actually built that application, really, I, I invite you to go and watch this, this these videos that I made, right? So there's actually 30 days worth of videos. Each one is like 10, 12, 15 minutes, something like this video was. And each one shows you a very, very, very valuable section of how to build an application, how to build and through the code and everything. Now I've, I've since then converted the code to um, version 32. So this is uh, version 32 and this is the code that I'm actually running. So I'll actually come back and make some, some uh, videos and actually add in my hard servo, right? I've added in my servo here. I'm gonna actually add in my servo in, into my motion group. I've added my trainer servo in here. We're gonna start doing some controls on that as well too and make a couple separate screens and stuff like that. So we're gonna continue and build and stuff on that. So I just wanna make this quick little video and show you how to make a client and hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully uh, you got some value out of that. And again, I appreciate you guys for watching the video and uh, please search the channel for whatever you would like. Again, we've made quite a many videos to help you with programming and learning and growing. So we'll see you guys on the next one.